When Eddie only had six months to live, all he wanted was peace and happiness. But when he found out how his family was dividing his fortune, he did something that will shock you. Eddie lay in his hospital bed, his frail body consumed by the ravages of his illness, with bated breath, he listened to the words of his good friend and lawyer Brian. His lips trembled and his eyes widened in horror. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. His children, those whom he loved and cared for all his life, are already dividing his property among themselves. Eddie felt nothing but helplessness and defeat. With somber words, Brian told him how his three children, Jeff, Dan, and Mark, began dividing his property among themselves. None of them waited any longer for their father to recover. They learned about their share in the inheritance and are already selling off priceless artifacts and putting his property up for sale. Brian told him about how Dan, the youngest child, had threatened to sue his brothers and Eddie because he believed the property had been divided against him. Mark, the second child, was also unhappy because he believed that Jeff got the lion's share of the inheritance and it would be better if there was no will at all. However, Jeff was adamant. He liked the way everything was divided up and assured them that nothing would change. They only agreed on one thing. They needed the money at the moment, and they couldn't wait any longer. After listening to all this, Eddie felt a heavy weight of disappointment fall on him. The fact that his children were already laying claim to the inheritance while he was alive and fighting for his life showed how materialistic they were. Brian warned Eddie that if he didn't take action soon, the situation would spiral out of control. However, Eddie didn't want to intervene. They were his children, his flesh and blood. The reason he had worked so hard all these years to build his fortune, he couldn't bring himself to confront them. For hours, Eddie wrestled with his thoughts, trying to figure out the right thing to do, but nothing came to mind. In the end, he reassured Brian, promising to think it over and find a solution to the problem. Having lived a long and rich life, he knew for sure that there are many things more important than money. Eddie was a multi-billionaire, but at his advanced age that no longer mattered. He suffered from severe cardiovascular disease and doctors gave him less than six months to live. Since then he had been in the hospital, paying good money to be under the care of experienced doctors who cared for him. Unfortunately, it seemed like the hospital staff were the only ones who were interested in his comfort and well-being. The children rarely visited him, and when they did, they never stayed for more than 15 minutes. For someone who had a large family, this was truly depressing. Before Eddie was hospitalized, he lived alone and his children rarely visited him. And now, as he fought for his life in a hospital bed, nothing had changed in his family. All he wanted was to spend the remaining time of his life happy and not feel any ill will toward anyone. But since his children were so selfish and unscrupulous in their pursuit of money, he had to do something. A week after Brian's visit to the hospital, he still had not come up with an acceptable solution when the lawyer came into his room again, looking even worse than the last time they met. Eddie immediately realized that something else had happened. The children turned to a lawyer several days ago, asking that the will be read out during their lifetime. They were waiting with increasing impatience for their father's death and they needed money. The fact that Eddie was alive interfered with their plans. So they offered the lawyer a million dollars to circumvent the legal procedures in their favor. At these words, Brian paused, feeling a wave of disgust wash over him. He couldn't believe that they had decided to buy him for money, ruining decades of friendship with Eddie. Eddie thanked him for staying true and choosing to be on the right side. Now he understood that his children would stop at nothing to get his money. Eddie was sure that none of his children would stop at simply bribing Brian. It was a call to action that could not be ignored. He told Brian to make an appointment for the following week to review the will. Less than two days after this decision, Eddie experienced a severe shock when Jeff and Dan appeared in his room, announcing that he was in good condition and should go home. It was so unexpected that Eddie immediately became suspicious of their intentions. The doctors advised him to spend the rest of his time in the hospital and be under constant observation in case of emergencies. So the idea that they would suddenly discharge him seemed far-fetched to him. He asked how they came to this conclusion, but none of the sons gave a satisfactory answer. Instead, they set about collecting his belongings. Dan brought a collapsible wheelchair and opened it so Eddie could be placed in it. They seemed to be in a great hurry to get him out of there. However, just as they were about to leave, a nurse came to examine Eddie and was stunned to see two men loading him into a chair. She immediately sounded the alarm because Eddie was not cleared for discharge. A doctor was called to defuse the situation, which was already getting out of control. Jeff and Dan insisted that they were leaving with their father. He only had a short time to live and they wanted him to spend that time with them rather than being stuck in a hospital room. The doctor explained how dangerous it was for Eddie, 
but Dan stubbornly replied that he knew better. The main thing is that they can spend time with their father. The doctor asked Eddie what he wanted, and the old man categorically refused to go with the children. He felt like they were up to something and didn't want to find out what it was. In addition, the hospital staff were kinder to him than his children, so he wanted to spend his last days in a more positive environment. Despite his refusal, his sons insisted that he go with them. The doctor then called security to remove both men from the premises. They tried to resist, but eventually agreed to leave when the doctor threatened to call the police. This act of the children was the last straw for Eddie. He realized what lengths they were willing to go to just to get his property. It was scary to imagine that the children, for whom he had sacrificed so much, were trying to kill him just because of money. The next day he called Brian to the hospital, and the two spent many hours together working on a new will. As the weeks passed, Jeff, Dan and Mark continued to live a life of luxury with their families. They sent their children to expensive schools so they could fly around the world. It was the best time of their lives, and things were only going to get better, or so they thought. Three months later, Eddie died in his sleep late one night. His family and lawyer became aware of this. Brian sobbed long and uncontrollably. The fact that the death was expected did not make the grief any easier. His children, on the contrary, were overjoyed. They immediately began planning his funeral so that the will could be read and all his assets could be divided. The kids tried to speed up the process, but Brian refused. He insisted that they take their time. If it weren't for him, Eddie would have been buried without ceremony and no one would have known about it. However, thanks to Brian, he was buried properly. All of Eddie's friends came. Representatives of the hospital were present, and other millionaires of the city also graced the occasion with their presence. The reading of the will was scheduled for the day after the funeral, and the children came to it in their best clothes. They laughed and chatted all the way. However, to their great surprise, they were not the only ones present at the reading. Besides them and their children, Dozens of people were also present. It was noisy and full of people they had never met in their lives. It was not the quiet meeting they had expected. Jeff pulled Brian aside and demanded to explain what was going on. Brian assured him that Eddie wanted to invite all these people. It didn't make sense to Jeff. None of them benefited from the will, so they had nothing to do with it. But Brian said nothing more and asked him to sit and listen like everyone else. Soon the reading began, and with every word the son's heart sank. Each invitee received at least $100,000 in cash or something equivalent. The nurses and doctors who cared for Eddie were also included in the list of recipients. Two patients who became friends with him during their stay in the hospital also received an inheritance. Then it was time to read out the wills of Jeff, Dan, and Mark. And to their great surprise, all Eddie left them was just a dollar each. Hearing this, Mark felt weak, just a dollar for each of them and the rest of Eddie's fortune was to go to charity. They were also ordered to move out of the house within the next week because his property was also going to charity. And if they refuse, Brian has permission to kick them out by any means necessary. Jeff vowed to contest the will. Now they were all poor and ruined. He had no right to subject them to such torture. Brian said everything was legal, so going to court wouldn't do them any good. Their father wanted them to know how difficult it is to accumulate wealth so that they would appreciate it more. The money they spent on entertainment all this time was to be considered their inheritance. As for the grandchildren, Eddie could not bear the thought of punishing them for the sins of their parents, so he set up trust funds for them, which they could only access at the age of 20. He wanted the best for his grandchildren, but was not sure that their parents could provide it. True to his word, Brian kicked all of Eddie's kids out of the house by the end of the week. They had to move their family to the suburbs, and they all had to find work. For them, this was a terrible blow. Now they had to earn every dollar hard, and spending became much more difficult than before. They greatly regretted their actions, but it was already too late. Dear viewers, what would you do if you were Eddie? Please write in the comments. And if you like this video, then like and subscribe to our channel. Goodbye. Bye.